like hell to get these jobs back. And now we've secured nearly $5 billion in new investment to bring thousands of jobs back to Belvedere. To reopen that plant assembly, build mid-sized trucks, state-of-the-art battery factory, and a parts and distribution center right here in Belvedere. Yeah. Folks, I'm fighting for a place like Belvedere because I came as a president determined to put an end to this trickle-down economics in this country. Yeah. When my predecessor was in office, six factories closed across the country. Tens of thousands of auto jobs were lost nationwide. And on top of that, he was willing to cede the future of electric vehicles to China. He said if America invested in electric vehicles, it would drive down wages. It would destroy jobs. It would spell the end of the American automobile industry. Well, like almost everything else he said, he... How did Democrats win big despite Biden's bad polls? What it means for 2024? Washington overlooked the surveys. See how individuals vote. President Joe Biden's partners jumped on that mantra after Tuesday's off-year. Political race delivered a resonating night for leftists. A gubernatorial success in moderate Kentucky, a compass of both Virginia, regulative chambers, and a mind-boggling triumph for early termination privileges in Ohio. It came at an ideal time, quieting developing vote-based uneasiness about the 2024 political race that arrived at a breaking point subsequent to surveying from the New York Times or Siena School showed Biden following previous President Donald Trump in five of six top landmark states. Must watch full video don't skip, and must subscribe please and support my Chanel. Leftists inhaled a murmur of hell, the White House felt justified. What's more, Biden's reappointment crusade asserted triumph against the punditry. Surveys a year out from the political race don't make any difference results do, Michael Tyler, the Biden lobby's correspondence's chief, said in an email to allies. Yet again citizens the nation over predominantly discredited the surveyors and savants and ended up rejecting the MAGA fanaticism that has come to characterize the cutting-edge conservative association. However, one year out from the 2024 political decision, liberals' solid presentation didn't end inquiries regarding Biden's solidarity as a competitor. Biden, who turns 81 years of age on November 20th, remains hampered by low endorsement appraisals and countenances preceded with worries among electors about his age and treatment of the economy. Tuesday's solid exhibition for liberals created another discussion. How much, if any, credit should Biden get for the result? Also, are liberals protected to apply their idealism from Tuesday to Biden in 2024? I don't feel that he was a component, veteran majority rule tactician James Carville said on MSNBC. Do questions stay about the president's age? Better believe it. I mean, how could any rational individual say that this isn't an issue? Carville ignored those in his party who could name him a bedwetter for conceding fear. You can't express that there's not worries with respect to electors, and there's interests with respect to leftists, he said. Michael LaRosa, previous press secretary for first woman Jill Biden, said it would be a finished misread of the outcomes to credit Biden for liberals' political decision wins this week. He rather highlighted liberals' help of early termination freedoms as the overlying element, not Biden's achievements in office. I wouldn't agree that it essentially had a say in the president, and that is great and terrible, really, La Rosa said, in spite of his disagreeability. Citizens in beautiful red regions were as yet not ready to surrender a right to early termination supported by the progressive faction. Please subscribe my channel and share with your friends and family.